Okay, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, CS5316, Natural Language Processing. So I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, so we are meeting again. Once again, uh, this is going to be an online semester, at least uh, in the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> So it has been a chilly winter, especially in Lahore. I think I thought, I think it's chilly, quite chilly today as well, it's windy. So I hope all of you are keeping warm. Uh, so, so the idea for today is uh, I will basically start with the uh, course outline. I will discuss uh, uh, the key components of the course, including grading as well as some summarize course outline and summarize course content. Uh, I will also be discussing the course policies, some of the course policies. So after that, uh, we will start with the introduction to NLP. So NLP basically natural language processing uh, is uh, basically deals with the computational models for processing natural language. And we will introduce this formally today as well. So this course is uh, an introductory course in natural language processing. And uh, both graduate as well as undergraduate students can take this course, uh, but uh, <clears throat> So, but, uh, okay, so we'll discuss this formally. Uh, by the way, are you guys uh, hearing me? Because usually there's no interaction, so I can't really see if you are hearing me and you can, you can see the slides. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> so impersonal way of communication is kind of difficult. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. so uh, CS5316, uh, Natural Language Processing, we discussed the foundations of natural language, natural language processing. Uh, so natural language processing, as the name suggests, deals with languages that are human languages, and we'll define this more formally shortly. And uh, in this course, you will get an introduction to the computational techniques for dealing with such natural languages. So the topics that we'll be discussing uh, would include simple processing, text processing. Uh, the main focus of the course would be text. Uh, we are not going to focus on speech. Uh, the focus would be on text as a natural language. So we'll be talking about text pre-processing, which includes things like matching as well as regular expression, as well as similarities between uh, two text strings. We will then move on to uh, how to model languages, which uh, basically is called language modeling. And we'll discuss both n-gram models as well as neural language models for language modeling. We will then also talk about <clears throat> uh, several uh, application areas of natural language. Uh, one of them is sentiment analysis. 
And the simplest way of sentiment analysis is sentiment classification. So sentiment classification essentially deals with trying to find whether a particular piece of text has a positive, negative, neutral polarity or not. So a, a significant portion of this course would involve uh, neural networks because uh, modern machine, modern natural language processing does involve sequential processing and neural network models for sequential processing are more, more very popular these days. So we'll discuss those as well. So the objective of the course, of course, is to introduce uh, the fundamentals of natural language processing. To introduce you to uh, the implementation and evaluation of natural language uh, processing techniques as well as algorithms, and to expose you to various libraries and tools that are available for processing NLP. So, uh, so to find to provide a finer grain of what you will learn from this course is given in the learning outcomes. So you will get an idea of how to process textual uh, data, which basically means that to input textual data, to extract useful segments from those text textual data, to identify various components of those textual data, like uh, named entities, for example. So this is uh, one aspect of uh, the outcome that you get from this course. Uh, you will also be able to understand how to uh, under, uh, get a deeper idea of the syntax as well as the semantics of what is expressed in the natural language. So we'll discuss syntax and semantics more formally shortly or maybe in the next lecture. Uh, but syntax, I think all of you understand from programming is a way of writing something. So natural language also has a way of writing. So we want to understand that as well. So you will also get, get an exposure on how to apply various NLP techniques. Uh, many of these techniques are machine learning based and some of them and some of them are neural network based. So you can call them deep learning based techniques for processing uh, natural language. So we'll discuss those as well. <clears throat> so in, in NLP, uh, a lot of tasks are performed uh, using resources. So resources could be structured, they could be unstructured. So you'll also get an idea of how to use such resources to build NLP solutions. So resources, a typical resource somewhat unstructured resource is Wikipedia, for example. A structured resource, a more structured resource would be WordNet for those who know these names. So WordNet is kind of a dictionary for English as, as well as for other languages. So you'll also be able to understand and process informal languages. So nowadays, everyone is familiar with the social media uh, in, on social media, most people write in an informal way. And oftentimes we write by mixing multiple languages. So processing multiple languages as well as processing informal uh, information or natural language is also an outcome that you'll get out from this course. So libraries is also a part of uh, NLP. So there are a lot of libraries out there. We will be focusing primarily on one platform, which is Python. And there are a number of libraries available in Python. We will be looking at some of those in our assignments, especially. Okay, very quickly, the prereq for this course for undergrads, I have placed CS300 as a prereq. So CS300 is advanced programming. Uh, the idea behind placing CS300 is that you should have a solid background in uh, data structures, 
which is CS202, as well as programming, first programming, which is CS200, and maybe some other CS courses as well before you go ahead, go ahead and take CS300. Uh, so that's the idea behind uh, making CS300 a prereq. For graduates, uh, of course, I am assuming that you are you have a CS background or a related background, so there is no uh, formal prereq for that. Uh, <clears throat> so some of the uh, you can say concepts and subjects that will be that are required in this course are statistics and probability, which I think all of you have studied at some level in your undergrad uh, curriculum. So data structures and algorithms are another important, uh, uh, you can say subject area or tool set that you will need during this course. So linear algebra from mathematics, that's also, you will see aspects of linear algebra in the course. So machine learning uh, is also quite uh, prevalent in NLP, but I did not place it as a prereq because most of the stuff that is required for machine learning, we will, we will be covering in the course. So, but if you have taken machine learning before, then it will help you to some extent. So of course you should be proficient in programming and we'll be focusing primarily on Python. <clears throat> so I think I will pause here a little bit because I've spoken quite a lot. And uh, if you have any questions so far, uh, you can ask right now. Okay, so I I'm assuming there are no questions. Okay, so moving on. Uh, So this is the grading breakdown that I've decided for this course. Uh, so assignments and project together would comprise of half of your grade and the rest which comprises of your fi midterm, final, as well as quizzes would comprise of the other half of the grade. And this has been modified uh, keeping in view the online nature of the course. Uh, and obviously, uh, taking exams and mo uh, monitoring exams online is slightly more difficult, so I've reduced their weightage. When I taught this course uh, on campus before, the weightage for exams was slightly higher. So assignment, there will be about uh, four to five assignments. The projects is 20%, uh, usually a group project. Uh, project uh, would be uh, decided uh, by you with consultation with me. So we are not going to give you fixed projects. Uh, so you can decide your own project as long as you have gotten approval from me or and or the TA, TAs. Okay, so the project is a big chunk, 20%. It will have maybe two or three deliverables starting from just before the mid where you have to submit a methodology and uh, literature report, and then a final deliverable, which is a final report, as well as a final presentation. So any questions? Uh, so the project will be a group project? Yes, it will be a group project. The number of members in the group uh, would be decided later based on the class enrollment. Uh, most likely two people. Okay, sir.
Okay, anything else? Okay. <clears throat> So moving on to the next slide, uh, I want to remind you about some of the policies that we'll be following in this course. So the quizzes would be uh, held during the class times. And most quizzes would be announced usually in the previous lecture. So let's say if the quiz is going to be held on Wednesday, I'll mention it in class or during lecture in the previous, uh, during the previous lecture. So we are planning to take uh, quizzes through the test and quizzes of LMS, and they will be timed, uh, let's say about 15 minutes maximum, and you will have a set of questions that you will have to answer online. Okay. So the mid and final exams would be held on campus or online, depending on whatever restrictions are being imposed on us. Uh, ideally, I like them to be on, on campus, uh, but if they are held online, then they will be held in a fashion similar to those that are held on campus. In other words, you will have a fixed time slot in which all of you would have to take the exam uh, simultaneously or in parallel, and you have to present yourself through a video link, maybe through Zoom so that we can monitor you. Or, or if you have any questions, you can ask us during the exam in a live session. So this is the this would be the case if we had have to do the exam online. Otherwise, uh, we might do the exams on campus. Uh, so moving on to the submission policy, uh, these are standard policies for all of my courses. For those who have taken courses from me before, they are the same. So for assignments as, as well as the project deliverables, you will be given a date and time for submission. You need to submit your deliverable by that date and time. Uh, you are, by default, you are given two, two days grace period. The first day, if you are late, you are detected 10%. The second day you are given, if you are late, uh, a 20% reduction is made. And generally after the second day, no, your assignment will would not be accepted. So if you want to ask for, and usually for assignments, you will be, you will be given about 10 days to about 14 days, so up to two weeks. So that's plenty of time as long as you start the assignment on time. So NLP assignments can be a bit involved because you have to look at new libraries, you have to process uh, large amounts of data. So you are required to start the assignments quickly as soon as possible. Uh, <clears throat> but if there is an urgent need for extension, you can ask, but not during the last day. So you need to anticipate an urgent need and uh, ask a couple of days at least before the deadline. Chika? Okay. Okay, general policies regarding sharing and uh, uh, professional ethics. I think all of you should be familiar with these, but it's worth reminding everyone again and again. So the policy for sharing uh, in this course is you can discuss your assignments with others. 
uh, but you need to submit your assignment individually, which means that you need to uh, understand whatever you have written and submitted as part of your assignment. And assignments might be, assignment grading might require you to present yourself for a viva. Okay. So if you're caught uh, copying from others, then there are penalties. Uh, so you, your case might be forwarded to the DC, the, uh, disciplinary committee. So actually starting this semester, there's a disciplinary, disciplinary committee for the school as well. So now I'm pretty sure uh, you will have quick responses as well as uh, judgments made on any cases that are sent to the disciplinary committee. So be careful, do not copy other people's stuff. Okay. So similarly for plagiarism, plagiarism basically means that you are copying stuff that has already been published and you are not uh, properly uh, acknowledging that you have copied this stuff from somewhere else. So this is plagiarism. And the same penalties can apply for plagiarism as well as for copying. Uh, and of course, uh, during exams and quizzes, we will also be ensuring or monitoring that you don't do cheating or other uh, unprofessional ways of uh, moving ahead, you can say, or getting a better grade. So uh, we are also trying to ensure an inclusive as well as a harassment free environment for everyone. Uh, so this essentially means that we need to respect diversity. So there are differences among people in various ways. So from those differences, we should learn rather than uh, let those differences become uh, a thorn in our engagements or interactions among us. Uh, and of course, professional ethics and behavior is essential while we are interacting and engaging with others. So attendance is not uh, monitored as well as it is not graded, but uh, from previous experience, attendance would benefit you a lot. Uh, so, because some of the content that we cover in course may not be directly obtained from the primary textbook that we are going to use in this course. And of course, there are associated discussions that occur during class time. So those are also helpful. So attendance is important. So uh, a few statements regarding philosophy, my philosophy of my teaching, and in general philosophy of uh, learning. So knowledge cannot be taught in a finite amount of time. So learning is a lifelong process. And in general, uh, when you obtain a degree, you are actually learning to learn. So what you learn while you are in this course or while you're doing a degree at LAMS is not the end goal itself. It's basically a process that you have started that will continue for the rest of your life. And we hope that you get this process or you learn this process because uh, whatever you learn today might change tomorrow. And uh, you need to unlearn what you have learned before. So any knowledge that you gain today may not be relevant tomorrow. So learning process has to be maintained throughout your life. So the same thing applies for this course. So you need to be active learners, be excited about the course, uh, go beyond what is required, ask questions. So uh, questions uh, kind of bring up new things and they open up new, uh, you can say, uh, borders that you are not familiar with. So if you have any question, you can ask. Ask me in class, ask me outside class, email, or if you find something interesting, you share it with others. Uh, by the way, for the course, we might uh, uh, 
uh, operationalize Piazza as a discussion board. So you can share information and ask questions on Piazza as well. So the new LMS uh, at LUMS has Piazza integrated in it. So we might use Piazza for discussions during this course. Uh, regarding grading in general, I'm not a strict grader, uh, but uh, obviously we need to rank students and there has to be, be a way of ranking students. So we need to have some way of ranking. And uh, of course your performance is the basis for that ranking. So any questions, I will pause here again. Okay, yeah, Joanna. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not looking at the chats. I'm waiting for your voice response. So I hope not, uh, you are not responding on chat. Uh, no, sir. There's no question. There's no question in the chat. Okay. Okay. okay, so let's move on. Okay, so this is the summarized course content for those who might be interested at this stage of the course to see what they can expect in this course. Uh, so we'll be starting with the introduction today. Uh, and also uh, discuss the motivation for NLP uh, through some applications as well as examples. So the next step, which probably would start uh, maybe this week or next week is text processing and in text processing, we'll be talking about regular expression, which you might have studied somewhere else as well, but we, we will revise that. We'll move on to edit distance, which is a way of quantifying the similarity between uh, textual strings. We'll also discuss uh, basic uh, text, pro text processing, uh, pre-processing techniques. Uh, actually, before this, we'll also talk about, briefly talk about linguistic, because uh, to, to study natural language processing, you need to have some idea of linguistic, at least the terminology, because we might be using those terminology during the course. So, so after the introduction, we'll, I'll also talk about a little bit about linguistics. Oops. So we will then move on to language modeling with n-grams, which is a probability, probabilist, probabilistic way of language modeling. We will then move on to text classification. And here we'll also be introducing uh, some basic machine learning techniques like naive-based classifier and logistic regression. And this would then be the starting point for our deep learning uh, or neural network-based uh, NLP. So uh, after this, we will talk about a very popular concept uh, in NLP in recent years, which is uh, vector representation of textual information, uh, which is also sometimes called embeddings. It could be word embedding, character embedding, sentence embeddings. So we will also talk about neural networks and neural language models. And the neural network that we're focusing on in this course will be sequential neural networks. So things like LSTM, RNN, transformers. So these would be the models that we'll be discussing in this course. For those who know uh, these terminologies. And these models would be used for classification, text classification, as well as sequential classification, as well as language modeling, as well as some applications like chatbot or machine translation. 
So peer tagging and named entity recognition, these are two uh, popular tasks in uh, NLP. We'll also be discussing this, but their solutions also would be primarily machine learning based, neural network based. So we'll also be introducing uh, some basic concepts in semantics and some resources that are available for building NLP solutions uh, effectively. Uh, these are called basically, uh, uh, you can say uh, resources like you can say ontologies, for example, or dictionaries or thesaurus. So we'll discuss these as well. So these are uh, application areas, machine translation, and question answering and chatbot. So this is the outline for this course in terms of content. Okay. Okay, so the course material the primary textbook is the speech and language processing by Dan Jurafsky. Uh, this book is available online. It has been updated uh, last month in December. Uh, so we'll be using this book as the primary textbook. So this book is available online. You can Google this name and uh, you can find it. It's uh, by Dan who is from Stanford. Uh, the recommended supplementary text, there are actually many books on NLP, but I have mentioned two of these here. Uh, Machine Learning for Text, this is also a new book uh, by Agarwal, very popular uh, researcher from IBM. Uh, it's a good book, I have this book uh, in a digital format, but uh, I might be sharing it with you, but uh, it's kind of licensed, I will see how it, it can be managed. Uh, the first book, as I said, was uh, available online freely, so that's not an issue. Another book is Natural Language Processing with Python. This is kind of a more uh, hands-on type of book in terms of it provides some code snippets as well. So this book also is, I think, available online, so it's not an issue. You can download it and read it and so on. And of course, there are many other material available on the web from technical material to coding help and so on, from tutorials to videos. So I think all of you are familiar with that. So you can rely upon those as and when required. So the website, the main website, the main resource would be LMS. The LMS tab is up and running. I have populated it. The resources section of the LMS uh, contain uh, various folders. So one of the folders is resources, which I think I have posted the book for the uh, course as well, the main book for the course. Of course, you can download it from the web as well. And the uh, slides and notes section contains slides. And if there are any notes that I make uh, here, I will post it there as well. I'm also recording the lectures. Uh, so the lectures, uh, the lectures would be posted on YouTube and I will let you know the link later on. So the posting would typically occur the, the next day. For example, if the lecture is today, I'll post it tomorrow. So, so the lectures will also be, be, be available through a video. So as I said earlier, Piazza might also be used for question answering and discussion purposes. So any questions or comments here or suggestions before I move on? Uh, so this, uh, who is the GA of this course? The TAs? Yeah. Uh, so the two TAs are uh, Sayyida Rijab and the other is Abdul Jamil. Uh, I'm not sure if they are available uh, today. They should be. Sir, I'm here. Okay. Okay. 
So Sarida Rijab and uh, Abdul Jamil. So we have two TAs. Uh, both of them are, are kind of experienced TAs, uh, and as well as uh, former NLP graduates. So they will be assisting with the course uh, this semester. <clears throat> Okay, uh, my office hours again would be on Zoom from uh, 3 to 4 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. I will share the Zoom link later on. I place it on the announcement on LMS. You can also email me and also, as I said earlier, you can also uh, discuss on Piazza as well. So if you need to uh, contact me or speak to me uh, outside office hours, you can just drop me an email. Okay. None, sir. If someone is on campus, can they visit you in, the, in your office as well? Uh, can you repeat the question? If someone, in, if someone is on campus, can they visit you in your office as well? Uh, Usually I will be on campus, not every day. I've not decided kis, kis mein aunga mein. Uh, but let's say if I'm on campus a particular day to visit kar sakta ji. So uh, currently to be ghar se hi kaam chal I think after February one, I will decide a couple of days during the week when I will come on campus. One day is Friday, hoga. the other day I have to decide. All right, so, so are there any uh, specifics regarding the course outline that you need to talk about right now? Are there any issues regarding enrollments that you need to discuss? Any questions about the grading, the assessments, the uh, course content? Answer. Um, what your requirements are slide thi. Usme apne likha hua tha ke data structures or algorithms dono chahiye. Lekin maine data structures ka course liya hua, algorithms ka course abhi maine nahi liya. So uska masla to nahi banega. Ah, uh, nahi. Mera nahi khayal. Data structures and algorithms. Actually, you data structures, which you are reading, we say that data structures are, but in them also algorithms are there. But LAMS, of course, algorithm is a separate course. Okay, so when I write data structures and algorithms, I am mostly talking about the algorithm that you study in the data structures course, CS202. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, Okay, any other question? Okay. All right. So, uh,
Okay, so let's uh, get into the introduction of NLP. So these are uh, slides of the book uh, with some minor modification that I've done here and there according to my needs. Uh, but essentially these are book slides. So what is NLP? So natural language processing, uh, So basically natural language processing is the, is the uh, study of computational models for processing natural language. So, so there are a couple of, uh, you can say keywords in this definition that are worth uh, thinking about. Uh, just a second. So what, what is meant by processing? It basically means the entire pipeline. So you are talking from acquiring the textual information to the end goal of processing that textual information. So acquisition to whatever the end goal might be. That could be summarization, that could be information extraction, that could be classification, that could be characterization that could be understanding in a more general sense. So all of this is processing. And part of the processing is of course, you are processing using computers. So you need to have appropriate representation for that. So a big part of NLP is representation as we will see. So how can we learn representations that can then help us achieve our goal, whatever our goal is. Maybe you want to extract something from text, we need to find a representation that will help us in that particular goal. And representation, when I say representation, it's basically a computational representation. So how do you represent something? Let's say a sequence of words can be represented by numbers, they can be represented by graphs, they can be represented by uh, something else. So that's what is meant by representation. So what the other keyword here is natural language. So these are human languages. So we are not talking about uh, languages like Python or Java or C or C, C++. We're talking about human languages, languages like English, Urdu, Persian, Arabic, French, German, and also languages that we humans actually use for communication. And they may, might not be as formalized as for example, English or Urdu. So you're all familiar with the type of language that we use on social media. So that language can be a mixture of English and Urdu. And it also might involve both or multiple languages in the same sentence. So any form of communication, and of course, as I said before, the focus of this course is textual. So we will be looking at language that is represented as text for communication. Uh, and of course, by the way, just to highlight, most NLP is done on text. So let's say even our speech be here, uh, usually we do speech recognition and convert it into text and then do NLP. Okay. So textual processing is thus more important if you want to extract useful information from lang language, because you can always input speech, convert it to text, do the processing. And let's say if you have obtained some result, let's say we have a result uh, which is also in natural language, you can also then synthesize that into speech back into speech again. So for example, here the slide here, uh, it has textual information, but through my text to speech engine, I can listen to this slide as speech. 
So that is easy. So that's why textual processing is more important in NLP. So as I said, human language, not Python or not Java or anything else. Although some of the concepts that we study here may be applicable to such languages as well, but it is not the focus of this course. So there are many other names by which NLP is known. Uh, so, so human language technologies, computational linguistic, these are the two more common names. Okay. Okay, any questions? Okay. Okay, so there are no questions. Actually, thodi si setting mujhe ek thodi si karni padegi. I do not hear any hand raises. So hand raises are beshak abhi na kare because I won't be able to uh, notice them. Uh, and also, if you want to speak uh, or ask, just speak up. Or ye class reasonably uh, small size ki hai, to koi issue nahi hoga. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so, so any questions here? So let's look at some examples and motivational examples, you can say. And of course, some of these examples, at least this particular one is somewhat dated, but it's a big milestone. So IBM Watson, uh, which is a uh, question answering uh, tool or system, you can say from IBM, uh, won the competition Je Jeopardy, which is a quiz competition, very famous quiz competition, and it's quite competitive. So this computer basically won this competition and won like millions of dollars. Uh, and of course, to, and this is a computer, so it has to answer questions uh, based on its knowledge. So first of all, obviously it has to understand the question. And usually in Jeopardy, the questions are quite complicated. You need, there's a question and you need to name a, either a person or a book or some, some noun primarily. In this particular case, we need to name a author of a book. So IBM Watson was able to understand the question extract the relevant information from that particular question, and then of course, give the right answer for that particular question. So this, all of this requires uh, NLP. So basically you have a question, you need to acquire it, you need to understand it, you need to extract relevant information from that. And based on the understanding that you have of that question, you provide an output, which is, generation in this particular generation is the name of the author. So question answering is nowadays a key application of NLP. And this was 2011, but now you have uh, lots of uh, real world application that you see every day. Uh, where questions are being answered by automated systems. Okay. So we will be discussing some of the uh, underlying uh, concepts of building a question answer system, question answering system. Sometimes they are also called chatbots because they interact with you. You ask a question and the system gives you an answer. So another example, motivational example, and this again, you have seen also in everyday life. Uh, so in this particular example, so you have an email in which uh, a meeting is being scheduled and 
the NLP system automatically extracts the relevant information from that email, which is textual in nature and puts it into the calendar. So the relevant information would be, for example, uh, location of the meeting, the time of the meeting, who is calling the meeting and stuff like that. And you basically then uh, enter that information into the calendar. So this is information extraction. And I think many of our uh, uh, email tools that are available today can do some of these things for you. For example, a common thing you have seen today is that you have written an email and you have attached something to it. You have put a reference to your attachment. And you accidentally press the send button without attaching it. So the system would warn you, you have missed an attachment. So how did that system understand? by looking at your text and understanding that there should have been a attachment with this email, but it did not see one. And then it basically prompted you to check whether you actually missed it or you should have, or, or, or you should have attached an email attachment or not. Okay. So this is information extraction. So given some textual content extract thing of importance of relevance of significance from that text. So one key uh, information extract, uh, uh, extraction application that we will study in this course is called named entity recognition. So, so from a given text, we want to identify entities. Entities could be persons, locations, uh, organizations, and so on. So information extraction uh, with an application to sentiment analysis. Uh, in this particular example, you see that there is a product, which is a camera, and people have given their opinions about this camera. And the opinions can be given about various aspects of the camera. So a camera has various aspects of significance. So for example, there's a lens picture quality, the build of the camera, the weight of the camera. So all of these are aspects upon which uh, there might be opinions expressed. And opinions are expressed by people uh, in natural language. So the idea would be, you can do many things here. One idea would be okay, for any particular piece of opinion, you want to label it as either positive or negative. So for example, there's opinion like the the camera looks flimsy or feels flim flimsy. So this is a negative opinion. While another opinion could be the camera was very light and easy to handle. So this would be a positive opinion. So we would like to classify opinions based on what has been written. So this is one level of sentiment classification. So another level could be K given the reviews of multiple people on multiple aspects, build a summary for that particular product. So for example, you look at one aspect, let's say the weight of the camera, look at all the information that people have mentioned about the weight, summarize it in some nice way, maybe build a histogram or build something else that summarizes that information. So this is sentiment analysis and NLP is behind sentiment analysis as well. And we'll be studying this in this course as well. Uh, okay, 1.26 p.m. time ho gaya. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have 1.45 done. Okay, so kind of slow hai. Pehla din hai, no problem. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so machine translation. So translation is a, another very famous application of NLP. Uh, in machine translation, essentially you are given a passage in one language and you want to translate it into another language. And nowadays this is now a, you can say standard application. We have it in our mobiles and we use it every day. 
So for example, if you receive a package that has Chinese written on it, you simply take a snap and it will convert it into uh, English or Urdu for that matter. So Google Translate does a tremendously good job for tons of languages. It also understands Urdu as, as well. So machine translation is now, I would say, a very uh, polished application of NLP, which is now in common use by everyone. So chatbots, uh, we talked about question answering before, but chatbots are in general, more general, but the idea is somewhat the same. Uh, you are interacting with the system and that interaction might involve questions, but it may not involve questions as well. It might just be chit chat or it might be just entertainment. It might be even, it might be even a uh, psychological help or uh, counseling help. So chatbots basically are becoming so chatbots have become mainstream nowadays and you find chatbots almost everywhere. So even on Daraz, there's a chatbot and you have chatbots for ordering, for example, let's say from Pizza Hut and so on. So chatbots could be primarily text-based. So like the, like the ones on Daraz, for example, or they could be voice-based. For example, you have Google Assistant or Alexa or even Siri on Apple phones. So the idea here is they understand your speech and process the information needed that is conveyed in that speech and then give you an answer again back in speech. Okay. So, so I believe chatbots would be the UI of the future and they're already becoming the UI user interface and they will become even more entrenched in our everyday life. So for whatever you want to do, you will have a chatbot interface. For example, on this, my computer here, I basically open various applications, a Outlook application, I have PowerPoint, I have Edge. Open. So, but I think in the future, there will be just one application, a chatbot application. I just tell it what to do, it will give me the information that I desire. So for example, if I want to write an email, I'll say, send an email to X, Y, and Z. It will open the email client and then ask me what you want to send. I will write it down or I'll ask it to attach a file. It will do that and then it will send the email. So if I want to search for a song, I will basically ask it to search for a song and you will just start playing the song. So the UI of the future would be primarily chatbot. And you already see that in Google Assistant, for example. So Google Assistant can do most of your stuff on your Android phone. Okay, <clears throat> so this slide basically gives you some uh, task in NLP uh, and their current state of uh, solution. So there are actually three, uh, you can say columns. One column is mostly solved. The second one is uh, there is significant progress being done. And the third one is they're still quite hard, but I think this was prepared like a few years back. So some of these things have evolved. For example, some of the things that are written in very hard have kind of moved into 
uh, they are now somewhat solved or a lot of progress be is being done there. So let's quickly look at this. If you look at uh, what has been solved to a great extent, the first column on the left. So things like text classification, things like spam filtering, things like named entity recognition, this is now uh, fairly well solved. You can solve this with a high degree of accuracy. So if you look at the middle column, so these are things that are somewhat more difficult. So things like word sense disambiguation, WST. So this basically means that there are some words that have different meanings in different context. Uh, so for example, you can think of, uh, so you can think of any particular word, for example, rain, R-A-I-N. So rain is a noun, it's also a verb. So, and of course, which particular form of this word is being used depends on the context. So other example could be very famous example that people typically give in books is bank, B-A-N-K. So bank is, it could be a financial bank, financial institution, it could be a river bank, or it could be something else. So what is the sense of that particular word you have to determine from the context. Now this all problem also, I believe is solved pretty much nowadays with embeddings and so on. It cannot, doesn't really lie in the second category. It should lie in the first category. So if you look at the third category, in the third category, most of the stuff is based on generation. So language generation is generally hard. So let's say if I ask you to uh, respond in natural language, to my questions, so that is hard. But this again has made significant progress in the last two or three years. So significant progress, I would say. So chatbots have made significant progress in the last two or three years. So this has also kind of moved to the center. So what are really difficult still to date is things like finding uh, the quality of some textual content. For example, let's say you want to do essay scoring. So let's say you have 10 students who wrote an essay, you want to determine which essay is better than, uh, which kind of rank those essays. So scoring is still very difficult. Generation has now become much better, but scoring is still very difficult. Classification is of course very easy as it is in the first column and so on. So, so Things are moving very quickly in NLP, and especially in the last two years, tasks regarding gen requiring generation have become much better. So language generation is much easier nowadays. So any question on this slide? Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, can you repeat this uh, core reference resolution? Core reference resolution? Okay. Uh, basically, this is about uh, relating to, uh, to, you can say, references in a, in a single sentence or paragraph. So, for example, uh, I don't know if there is example here, but I don't But the idea is like, let's say uh, you have a sentence in which a name is mentioned. And then also, for example, there are two names are mentioned. And then there is, in the same sentence, later on, there is a, there is a uh, pronoun that is mentioned. Then there is in the same sentence later on there is a there is a pronoun mentioned. So the, the idea is to which person that pronoun refers to. So we want to, uh, resolve the reference issue. So for example, if in a sentence there, is, there are two names, let's say Asim and uh, Abid are mentioned. And then later on, he said that, so who is this he referring to? Is this to Asim or to Abid? But usually in the language you can, as humans, we can figure out, 
कि ये ही कौन है बट ऑटोमेटिकली निकालना इसको इज समवर डिफिकल्ट और चैलेंजिंग सो दिस इज को रेफरेंस रेजोल्यूशन ऑफकोर्स ये जरूरी नहीं है कि सिर्फ नेम्स के लिए हो सकता है ये और चीजों के लिए भी हो सकता है सो इट कुड बी फॉर लोकेशन इट कुड बी अदर एंटिटीज दैट आर मैं इन द पैसेज uh any other question okay okay so one of the difficulties with processing natural languages ambiguities so natural natural language is quite ambiguous and uh, crash blossoms basically these are uh, headings primarily or they could be any other sentence or paragraphs which are very easily misinterpreted or ambiguous so these are some examples given here so for example red tape holds up new bridges so literally or if you try to understand it in one way you can understand it in one way but this is actually talking about bureaucracy uh kind of being hurdles to the construction of new bridges but it is written as red tape red tape by the way here is a idiom idioms are uh, basically collection of words that do not translate literally they have uh, meanings that are non literal so hospitals are sued by 7 foot doctors so the doctors are not 7 foot long but obviously it's difficult to interpret uh, without a deeper understanding of the concept behind this so local high school drop out cuts in half so again so these are very complicated uh, you can say phrases or sentences and even humans we can interpret them in different way and they are ambiguous so so what to think about a computer who has limited knowledge about language so that's why nlp is hard so in this slide we uh, basically discuss some examples of ambiguity in natural language okay actually let's move on to the next slide so so why is natural language understanding difficult so there are several reasons here and of course all of them can be interpreted as ambiguous or difficulties associated with the language so there are issues like segmentation issues so there could be compound words that are written together uh they could be words that are written separately there are words uh that uh have been built on the fly so there's also the issue of informality so, and this is especially true for social media uh so spelling variations contractions abbreviations all of this make things difficult so non standard english so segmentation issues so segmentation essentially means that what constitutes a unit of uh language so that is sometimes also not trivially decided from the language so idioms are a major issue as i mentioned earlier on uh so idiom do not translate literally so things like dark horse doesn't really mean a horse who has a dark color or beating around the bush for example doesn't mean that you are using a stick and going around the bush it means something else so how do you understand such kind of language because uh, of 
the, their non-literal uh, semantics. So neologism basically are newly coined words and these are uh, fairly common in our social uh, media world. Uh, so you have, for example, tweet. So tweet before Twitter came into being, tweet was the sound of a bird, but now you know tweet is something else. And then of course there's retweet. So you also have words like unfriend and you have bromance and uh, many other things. For example, a new word that has been coined in the last year or so is COVID, for example. So COVID has increased tremendously in frequency uh, in our natural language writings as well as speech. Okay. Corona, COVID, all of these are now new words. iPhone, for example. So iPhone, I and phone. So this is a new word. So entity names can be very tricky. For example, uh, names of movies. So where is the Bugs Life playing? So Bugs Life is a movie's name. But if you don't know that whether this is if that this is not a movie name, then this sentence becomes the meaning of this sentence becomes totally different. And also another thing that is important and essential in NLP is world knowledge, knowledge of the world. So you cannot understand language without knowing uh, the world around you. So things like uh, a daughter is always a female, right? So we know that, but you need to tell the computer a daughter is female while a son is a male, or mother is female and father is male, right? So this is knowledge of the world and it could be at higher level also. For example, uh, so whenever, for example, uh, uh, for example, uh, Queen Elizabeth and Kate is mentioned, for example. So Queen Elizabeth and Kate has a relationship. So they are, uh, I don't know what's the relationship. I think Kate, uh, Queen Elizabeth is the mother-in-law of Kate, right? I guess so, yeah. So I mean, this relationship comes from knowledge of the world. All right, any question here? So we are out of time actually. Uh, so any questions before I actually stop? So any questions? Okay, then I think uh, I will stop here and we will inshallah start again on Wednesday. Uh, I have uploaded these uh, slides on uh, LMS as well as the next slide. Uh, and uh, so we'll start from there next time, inshallah. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, you are recording me upload the recording? Yes, inshallah, I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, sir. Thank you.
Çıkmadı.